Hello there, Garden Paws players. How are you doing? Thank you for clicking. Today we'll be going through some basic building and other tips for decorating in the game. Welcome to the new Switch players. Somewhere around here is a Switch, and when it's located, I'll put out another video with those control options on it. For now, this demo is done on a PC with a keyboard since the controller highly limits the options in which objects can be positioned using an item shifter. This is being done in creative mode for quick availability of all the items. It's a way to craft in game with unlimited supplies of whatever is needed. First up is a basic house, or a cabin, or a shack, storage, whatever you want it to be. This project combines together a bulk of the assets provided for construction of buildings, and those can be found in your first workbench. You can upgrade this workbench to include some of the items that you may not yet have at an NPC in town as you progress through story mode. Just keep chipping away at the quests and sell off some bouquets when possible for faster gold generation. There's still a lot you can do with the handful of placeable structure objects from the beginning. There's enough for a foundation, walls, and a roof at least. The easiest thing to do when building is to put down some wooden foundations first. These end up being snapped together guides for many of these subsequent pieces. If you're going for a little extra height, wooden platforms can be used underneath the wooden foundations. Which I'm going to do here since this is a bit of a beach hut in mind with the goal. Textures of the foundations can be changed in many ways, and I'll get to that option too. Two half foundations for a front entrance, four wooden foundations to accommodate the hut, and two extra for a deck in the pack. To build, find the items you want and put them into the action bar for build mode. After finding the location you want, start throwing down foundations or platforms like other assets, such as the chests or workbenches that you've probably already been moving around in the game. Don't worry if it's not exactly how you want it. This is where the work of the item shifter comes in, a craftable tool that allows multiple ways to position objects. Put this in the action bar, and when highlighted, you'll get a glowing beam between you and your character that will jump between objects. You can lock onto items that you're able to highlight using the control key. If there are many items placed close together, you can also hit the spacebar to bring up the objects in the near radius. Select what you're looking for by scrolling and clicking. You can move them without locking, but this allows for easy running around to see if the positioning is correct. The R key allows for skipping through different directions, and tapping can slowly space them over, or combine shift to move in larger gaps. This is where using a controller can get frustrating because of the lack of ability to change in the six directional options as one can with a keyboard. We can use a combination of walls, walls with windows and doors, or some glass options. There's also a half and short wall. I'm going to use as many as possible here can give this hut a nice little view with a glass window and a high ceiling. One can also opt for slightly more space by adding a loft with additional foundations and a ladder. There's a choice of some different roof designs that can be done here, so let's rocket pack around and see which ends up looking best for this. The corner walls work together with wooden ramps for a basic triangle eave look. The curved ramp piece can be used for more of a pyramid top look. And I'm going to leave it like that. It works. Common items used for a deck would be fences for railings or short walls for low barriers. But it could be a line of planters or anything, really. There's a staircase, ramp, bridges, or a combination that could be used to get to the elevated entrance of the hut. The wooden door has an activate for open and close. If it doesn't line up quite right, try the item shifter to slightly rotate. Half a fence would be convenient, but you can often find ways to tuck them into walls or other decorative items, like planters, can be used for the front. Half foundations can be added for a shorter awning over the porch or entrance. Moving on to textures and paint. 
These are found in the paint workbench and there's some choice from subtle to wild. This bench also contains dyes for clothing and other accessories, which I'll get to doing a video on shortly. I do plenty of garden pause videos along with many other farming, crafting, racing, and just general life simulations if you're interested in those or building virtual spaces. With a variety of brushes in hand, let's look at some of what can be used for finishing. Wood and stone brushes have the bulk of the conventional wall and floor textures, though there are multiple brushes for changing the colors of shingles. I'm going to go for a natural wood finish here, sort of rustic-ish. A building tip for interiors is putting some pattern or color brushes to use for accent walls. Throw up a duplicate plaster wall over the first and move it inward a click for clearance. Here's where you can go super clash creative, or pick a theme that will blend with the room since these brushes can be used on blank canvas or rug decor as well. Let's fill this place up with furniture, doing this interior in more of a traditional and minimal style, using starter wooden furniture workbench pieces to keep it rustic looking. Once again, using the handy dandy item shifter to lock onto these pieces and get them moved into position. Not a ton of space to get carried away, but we'll see what fits. A lot of the storage containers can be scattered around as convenient decorations, making this into a functional storage space for an overflow of building materials and foods. Basically a big but fancy looking shed. Incorporate a fridge, aquarium, some of the fish crates, and you'll have quite the fish locker, especially with a couple extra baskets. If it fits, add a cooking station to start processing your catches on site. The deck could include a drying rack for fish and a bonfire pit for grilling. Another might be the bakery or cafe using the fridge, the marble display cases, the egg, milk, and bottle storages lined uh, maybe on the outside with flower crates to store fruits and vegetables. You could also go with a jewelry store combining the workbench, marble displays, gem, and ore storages. If you have that problem of accumulating all the cute fashions in the game or making your own using the Garden Paws mod, then it requires much closet space. Wardrobes, costume chests, marble displays, mannequins, crates, stone displays, and baskets all provide tons of spots to tuck away an outfit for later, but also provides a cute creation on your island to hide it all. Speaking of hiding, here's another build tip that I'm using to add decoration. Wooden crates can contain a single item and it will pop through an icon at the top. This crate is small enough to be tucked inside larger furniture or on the bottom of a shelf. This way, you can put a food item on an end table, perhaps even a plate underneath it. Some of the pieces will already act as displays for whatever items are stored in them. Pieces such as the boat shelf and large birch cabinets obtained later in the game. These can further expand on how much material space you can fit into one small hut while still keeping a theme. There are several already pre-made paintings and rugs to finish off the room, but also the provided blank pieces allow one to use the brushes for a more appropriate finish. Progressing along the pirate coin search will get you sweet pirate gear, including wall hangings for your sea dog hangout. The lighting is a bit more of a limited choice. Hopefully we'll see some more illuminated style choices as devs do work very hard to provide new content constantly. There's some string lanterns, or a single, lamp post, and a basic campfire. Don't forget the flowers. This is garden pause after all. Must put some color into mandatory planters everywhere. Oh, okay, I'm exaggerating. Not mandatory, but rather hard to resist since you can get carried away here. After one plant blossoms, just add another seed to mix or match varieties. I'm cheating here with the grow orb since it's creative mode. This will take a lot longer in story as plants have different rates of growth. All finished! Basic 4x4 building and garden pause just for fun or function. 
Thanks for sticking around and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm happy to try to answer any questions you may have about building in the future videos. And here's a preview of some builds on Garden Paws so far. Take care y'all, bye bye!